For the stillwater hatch chaser, the traveling sedge, or motorboat caddis in some regions, is the ultimate. Large bugs disappearing in aggressive splashy rises causes the healthy to call in sick or the gambling of prime vacation time to hit this hatch. The late Art Mikuluk designed his sedge or caddis adult pattern for just these occasions. Here are the materials you will need to tie your own batch of Mikuluk sedges. So let's tie the Mikuluk sedge. Into the jaws of my regal I've placed a number 8 Mustad C53S 3 extra long curved hook. I'm going to attach some olive 70 denier tying thread and cover the shank to give a good firm thread base for our materials. The materials for this fly are pretty simple. Elk hair, hackle, and seals fur or seals fur substitute. So I've wound the thread back to about the rear of the barb. I'm going to come back all the way up to about just back a hook eye width from the hook eye. I'm going to take a pencil sized clump of elk hair and I'm going to hold it by the tips and stroke and open the fibers to remove any of the short under fur and short fibers as well as the under fur. Pull that out, place that into a hair stacker, tips first, and tap on the table, rotate my hair stacker 90 degrees, come in with my thumb and forefinger in my left hand and pinch and control the fibers. Now deer hair, elk hair, it's a hands-on material. You want to make sure you got lots of hands gripping this at all times. Don't give it an inch because it will take a mile. So I like to have a tail on this. The tail proportions are important. So I want to make sure the tail sticks out about half the shank length. Take this up to where the thread is hanging. Pinch it off at that point and trim away the excess. I'm going to come in with my tying thread around once, twice, three times, four times, tight, tighter, tightest, and again, not letting go of the material, secure this elk hair down the hook shank. And as I get near the tail area, I'm going to release my thread tension, reduce my thread tension rather, so I don't cause the, the tail to flare unnecessarily. I can then go back up, and as I get away from the tail, I can get progressively tighter. And we can go up and down the hook shank a couple of times like this to pack and compress the hair onto the hook shank to make sure it's in there good and strong. It shouldn't twist. This is quite durable now. You can see that tied in. But the, the tail length is important because the tail length is going to be the measure for the three-tiered wing we're going to put on this. And you'll notice the tying thread is hanging a couple of turns forward of the base of the tail because we're going to dub a body over the rear quarter section and if I pull down on the tying thread to apply the dubbing I don't want to have that action cause tension that causes the tail to flare. We just spent all that time uh, to make a nice gathered tail. We don't want to spoil it. For the body I'm going to use some seals fur in this case. It's going to take a little sparse clump. This is pretty coarse dubbing so we're just going to pull down Moisten my fingers a bit and give it a good, firm twist. And if you don't have access to seals fur, there's lots of good substitutes out there. Or you could use any of the dry fly, many dry fly bends out, blends sorry, that are out there, such as Spirit Rivers Fine and Dry or, or um, Montana Fly dubbing products as well. Um, work equally well. And this is an olive coloration. And we're just going to wind that around and form a body section that stops just, just in front of the hook point. Okay? And from there, I'm going to take my tying thread forward. 
to about the halfway point and prepare another clump of elk hair in the same manner that I did for the first. You don't have to have a lot of elk hair. Like an elk hair caddis, the elk hair that forms the wings on this fly is a cumulative effect. So we'll tap that off, nip away some of my pull this out of the hair stacker and we're going to lay this on top of the hook shank so the tips of the of the uh, fibers are just slightly shorter than the tips of the tail. We're trying to build a three-tier wing here that's tent-like in look just like the natural traveling sedge and we're just going to trim that for length again just like the the uh, tail material around once twice and we get progressively tighter again I'm not letting go lifting up slightly to make sure in the combination of the thread tension to secure that the wing stays righted on top of the shank and there we go we've got the second wing in place and we're go now going to dub using our seals fur good firm twisting motions with any coarse dubbing like this and use a little will go a long way if you're having trouble it's probably because you've got too much material onto the shank and you're not being using a firm twisting motion and you can see again my tying thread is forward of the base I've left a little bit exposed I can wind that back and then secure that right against the wing butts and I don't want to cause the wing to flare unnecessarily and we're just going to bring that up, maybe put a little bit more on, just a touch. Cover all those wing butts up. And then we're going to take the tying thread forward to about the three quarters mark. A long errant strand. And we're going to repeat this process again and tie in. Another clump of deer here, the same dimensions, volume, if you will, as the previous stacks. You don't have to count individual fibers, but it should be all approximately the same. We've got a few strands here that are a little longer than they should be. So just get that evened up. And again, we're going to hold that on top and tie this clump. The tips are just slightly shorter than the tips of the first wing. Going to come into that point, pinch it off, change hands, trim away the excess, lay that on top of the shank, once around, twice around, whoops, missed it. Now lay that on, lay that on top of the shank, around once, twice, three times, just progressively getting tighter. Don't try to, this is just 70 denier tying thread and it's perfectly good to tie in with this fly because it's, at the end of the day it's going to reduce our thread bulk. We just use more finer wraps and it's nice and flat so it's not going to cut the thread and we just by using progressively tighter wraps and being mindful of the tension we use, the risk of breakage is minimal. We'll just hold that in place and you can see we've got our next wing on. Just push that down a bit if it's flaring a bit too much. And then we take another and repeat the same process we've done to form the body. So we're going to take using firm twisting motion and a minimum of material, spin this onto Spin the seals for twist it right onto the tying thread. And you can see basically I've just changed the color of the tying thread. There's not a lot of material on there. A little goes a long way. So we put a first couple of wraps at the base of the wing. Wind forward. And that's about fine. You want to, if anything, you can hold back a bit. We don't want to crowd the head area because the next wing 
it starts the fly starts to busy up a little bit. We've got a few more components, hackle, dubbing, and wing to add in. So just like we've done with the previous clumps, we've taken our L care, removed the under fur and any short fibers by gripping them tightly at the tip. Place those fibers into the stacker tips first. Stack the third and final clump nice and even. Again, back onto the wing about three quarters of the way up. But in this case, we're going to make our tying thread. We're going to advance our tying thread forward to about an eye width back from the hook eye. Hold that in place. And we're not going to trim this section. So around once, twice, tighten, and then just get that progressively tighter, tight, tighter, tightest philosophy to securing in the hair. And again, notice my hands are not leaving the material. I am not giving this material an inch of space to get away from me. It's a hands-on material. And again, by adjusting the thread pressure, I have that nice tapered caddis shape that we're looking for. And we can come up right up to the base of those tips. We can sweep them up and back, throw a few thread wraps to push them up like an Elcare caddis, and gather them in. If I've got one short errant fiber here, we have scissors for him. And then we're going to secure our hackle in. For the hackle, I'm just using a whiting 100 pack. This is a number 10. Now this is a number eight hook, but because we build up the thorax area where we're going to palmer this hackle through with dubbing and the width of the um, the elk, we, elk hair we just tied in, you can use a one size smaller hackle. It'll balance out nice for you. I've stripped away the fibers from the base of the stem and I'm going to secure those in dry fly style with the dull side of the feather facing me. So I'll wind this forward or palmer this over the thorax we're going to dub. Those fibers are going to radiate forward. They're going to move forward this way and help support the fly on the water. So now we're just going to pull down and as we did with the previous body sections, moisten fingers, firm twisting motion, and apply the dubbing. Start back on the base of the wing. Secure forward, there's still a little bit more to go. You can always add dubbing, but if you've got too much on there, it starts to get a little problematic. Better to err on the side of sparse in just about every tying situation you'll probably ever come across. Just wind that down. Push that up against, pack it in there. We want to make sure we still have room to finish the fly at the eye, which we do. And then we're just going to take our saddle hackle, and I'm just going to use my hands to wrap it. Place one complete wrap right against the base of the wing, and then just palmer or wind this forward right up. Z zigzag the hackle through. A couple of turns to hold it. Nip away the excess. I'm just going to take my thumb and forefinger and sweep everything back, trying to trap the minimum amount of hackle fibers in the process. Take my whip finisher. After building a small head, whip finish, trim away. And if we've got a few errant hackle fibers in there, we can come in. I could tell you they're antenna, but I'd be lying. We just trim those out of the way and then sort of stroke our um, elk together. Come in and trim it like an elk hair caddis. And then I'm going to rotate the fly upside down. I've got a few long strands of dubbing here that sitting there and then I'm just going to come in with my scissors and trim, trying to get my hands not into the camera here, 
and just slide the scissors in with the jaws slightly open and trim the fly, the hackle fibers flush along the bottom because you can stroke those up out of the way uh, because the caddis, the natural caddis, do sit low on the water where they'll sit up after emerging and then they'll pop along and scurry. Now what we can do as well to further aid this is I'm going to take some UV clear fly finish in thin formula and I'm just going to put a little drop in specifically into my wing butts here. I'm going to let that sit. Make sure you you know keep the hook eye clear and when we're happy where they're sitting like that I'm using a little gravity on an angle like this and if I just come in and cure the fly finish that's going to stiffen up that front section as well as obviously reinforcing the hackle and the reason we want to do this is these traveling sedges or motorboat caddis as they're known in some circle once they've emerged they love to sit and then scurry along the surface creating a distinct V wake and the combination of these hackles and this stiffened front section of the elk is going to help form that V wake that the trout use to hone in on and recognize sorry to home in on and recognize that as food so there you have it the finished Michelux sedge whenever I'm going still water fly fishing there's a chance of running into some caddis or sedges as they're known in some circles. This fly is always nearby in case they start taking them on the top because it's one of the most explosive, exciting dry fly opportunities you'll have the good fortune to experience. So make sure you have a few Michelux sedges in your box in these number 8s, 10s, and even as big as a number 6. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find lots of information, including fly fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, dates on my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. Please join the conversation on my Facebook page or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well. Mm -hmm.